On this camera to API tutorial, we're going to focus on focus. I don't like puns very much. Welcome to mobile application tutorials. In the previous tutorial, we just tidied up our code for when we turn the application off or switch to another application. An important part that had to be done. Now we're going to focus on, I've done it again. Now we're going to um, work on the focus part of the camera application. Uh, the, what happens is when you press the camera caption button, you want your focus to lock on whatever image you're taking a photograph of and then you're in, in a preparation to actually capture that image. So we're going to work on the focus portion first. Right, first part is we're going to have states. The very first default state we had was the preview camera state, just the preview, the preview being displayed on the phone. We need another state which is the state when we've actually locked the focus. The focus is locked on the image and we can actually take a photo of that image. So we're going to set up some states um, and that's going to be used in our uh, capture, create session, callbacks. Okay, so let's just create some more members here. So this first one's gonna, I'm gonna call it state preview. And it's to monitor the preview state. Let's give it a number zero. Now we'll call the next state uh, wait lock. Now I want to create another member that will just be assigned to any one of these states. I'll just call it M state. Okay, that's the states. Next step is I want to implement those states in our capture session callback here. So we've got one overridden method here on capture started. I'm not going to use that in this moment in time, but I want to create a couple other callback methods, a couple other overridden methods. So go in here, the override methods. I want to write override on completed and on failed. Okay, an on capture completed for our focus state. It will tell us that a focus is locked for capturing an image. So I just want to work on this. I'm basically all I'm going to do in here is call a private method. I'm just going to create in here, and it's just going to be called process. And I'm going to pass it the total captured result. Just the result. Now I need to implement that method inside here. It takes that capture result. Okay, so this process method is just going to keep hold of our different states for us and act on um, act on whichever state we're in at the moment. So I'm just going to put a switch statement. And we're going to pass in our state. And we'll do it for the uh, preview state first. Put in the case for that.
Okay, in here, I don't actually do anything. So it just goes in here and then just pops back out, which is what we want for the preview. Just keep on running and not actually act on it. Let's put a little comment here, do nothing. Okay, next case, we will do something. We're going to act on the weight lock. Okay, I'm going to create an integer. This is what gets returned from the capture uh, result. And I'm going to call it autofocus state. We want to get the state. Now we can call result get and capture result. And we want to get the state of the autofocus state. Now we want to check that state. If it equals camera capture. So basically, if this equals, this will tell us if the autofocus stop autofocus state is locked. So that's what we and we'll set up a trigger for that. So you press the capture button. We're going to say right. I'm triggering for a focus lock, and then it'll come inside here when the focus is actually locked prior to us actually catching, capturing the image. So just in here for the moment, I'm just going to put a toast and say we've captured the focus lock for this. Just keep, try and keep these tutorials in a manageable size. Okay, hard to say. Focus. Lock says full. Set the time for that. So that's all I'm going to do here. I just want to add another toast. I'll copy this down to on capture failed down here. And if I just make that unsuccessful. Okay, so this is in case something goes wrong, we'll track that as well. Okay, so we've got the callback successful now. Now we've got to actually implement the part where we press the camera cap capture button. And going back to the very old tutorial here, we had this code here. Um, just let me comment out these spaces here. I'm not going to use any of this at this stage. All we want to do is prove that we can focus, focus lock. So let's comment out all this code. And now I'm going to just create a new member down here called lock focus. Now we need to implement that method. I'll probably do that at the bottom down here. Right, here's where we're going to set up our uh, capture session here. And I'm just going to use my builder first. So in preview request builder. And we set. For this, the key's going to be camera capture request autofocus trigger. So I'm going to set this value here for a trigger, basically. And we go back there. And I'm going to say I want to be careful here. What I want is I want the autofocus trigger start. I want to start the trigger on the autofocus, so I select this here. And now it's a matter of just before I do that, it's important that we set to change our state to 
state weight lock. So we're waiting for the focus to lock here. So now let's start our request. So, and we're just going to do a capture with our request builder. We need a digital build on that. Now we can pass session capture callback and we've got a handler from the previous tutorial. Okay, because we're calling camera resources, we need to uh, do a catch on the um, camera exception. So I'm just going to let me just highlight. So I'm just going to call try catch on that. So if we get a camera access exception, we need to catch that. So I've just put the code inside there. Okay, after we've implemented this method, we need to implement another method called unlock focus. So we want to undo what we've done for a lock. So once we've done a lock, it's going to keep continually locking that capture request session. We're going to be stuck in this loop. So we need to unlock it and go back to our preview camera preview state. So I'm just going to make a copy of this method here. Paste it up above. And change the name of this to unlock. And first thing we can do is change the state. To state preview. And we just got to set the control autofocus trigger. We need to cancel that. So let's see what we got here. Can cancel that. And, and then we capture another camera capture request, cancelling our uh, focus lock. So we just go back to normal preview. Okay, I'm going to need to call this unlock focus inside our capture request callback. Let's see if I can find that. We are here. So if this is successful, we need to unlock the focus again. Okay, that's all I believe I need to do to get the lock focus part of the camera 2 API working. Let's try running that and see what happens. And we'll record that so you can see what's happening on the device. Okay, I've just hit a bug here. I've been waiting to try and catch this one. It's an intermittent bug. I'll stop recording. I've seen it before. And if we go into there, it's basically my image view is null there. So it could be something happening in the async task. Let me go into this. I believe this is happening in the bitmap worker task here and potentially this could be null so let's put a bit of protection around that so if image view not equal to null we'll just run the code inside there Put this code here inside there. Okay, go back to our activity. Okay, let's try running this again. and record what's happening on display. Okay, so all I need to do is take photo and we want to lock the focus. So we've got the focus lock successful and then it switches back off again. We unlock it after the picture is taken with the unlock focus method. 
Okay, stop recording. Okay, and as usual for these tutorials, we'll put in a few breakpoints and just step through the code changes that we made. So here's a good place just to inside the process here. Um, sort of we know that we're seeing on capture completed, so I'm just going to keep the breakpoint there. And I don't want it on photo, I want lock focus. So we'll put one in here and one at the end of there. Okay, let's try running that. Okay, so it's now started up. Um, I'm probably hitting the um, preview state here, so let's verify that. Okay, so it's done nothing. Um, let me put the breakpoint in there and continue on. Okay, so preview's happening fine. Um, we probably were hitting the preview state, which is continuous. Now let's go to capture an image to lock the focus. Okay, so we've locked the focus. We changed the state to state lock, and now we um, set up a capture request to start the uh, autofocus trigger. So we're setting that now, and then we set up our capture session request with that uh, capture session request with that capture request. And here, let's continue on. And we're now in the wait lock state. Let me move this down into here. This might need several attempts. So let's see what happens. Okay, what's my AF state? Is two and four. Okay, so it's just in a different state at the moment. We're not actually going to um, be in the locked state yet. You'll see that as I step through. Okay, let's continue on. Let's press that again. We can remove this breakpoint now for lock focus, continue on. And now we're hitting, we've locked the focus, we're inside the lock focus state. If we step on down there, we will be displaying that's gone now. And so we unlock that and continue on. And we quickly had the toast being displayed there. So we want to unlock the focus or else we'll be stuck in this lock focus state. We want to get back to the state preview state. Okay, so that was just this for this tutorial. We just want to focus on how we can set up our capture request for a focus trigger lock, focus trigger lock request, and then how we can um, actually capture that request in the session callback and using by our capture results, we can get the different states back, as well as the state we want for actually cap, uh, being in, a, in the uh, focus locked state. So once you're in the focus locked state, you're actually in the position where you can actually capture the image. And so that was the intention for that. Basically, we just want to make sure our image is focused before we can actually save it to memory. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Remember, if you like my tutorials and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. And that's all for this one. Bye for now.